and its scenery, like every country and state, Kerala too was weighted down by the aftermath of World War. As predictable, social orders was affected too. How? It was slowly yielding to moods of aggressive selfishness and unconcern for the underprivileged, the weak, the lonely, the sick, the deserted, the oppressed and so on. They were being ignored. The silent majority could not even meet their basic needs. Contagious diseases like Vasuri slayed so many. Mariam Teresa with her three companions reached around to the families and places as the apostle for the oppressed, the underprivileged and the weaker section of the society. She did not consider the caste, community or religion but beheld the face of Christ in all, especially the needy. Her love of God promoted her to undertake various measures to bring relief, consolation and support to the poor even in the face of many difficulties. Sister Kochi Tracia, her niece, recalled that Mother Mariam Tracia had to struggle to bring help to the poor and sick and give care and protection to the orphans. There were financial difficulties which were overcome with the help of benefactors and well-wishers. She trained her young niece and members of the congregation in the practice of virtue of charity by inculcating the spirit of sacrifice. Tracia reached to the hearts of sick and suffering, healing their body and spirit at the same time. Monsignor Mutteran of the Historical Commission remarks that her visit to the sick were widely appreciated by the public at large. She used to visit the victims of smallpox and cholera. She begged for help from rich and gave the collection to the sick and poor, although she herself was poor. An eyewitness account of one such heroic gesture of love is as follows. There was a Hindu prostitute who became a victim of smallpox. Mother Mariam Tracia bought her in the convent and nursed her. The woman died within an hour, the child was brought up in the convent. Historian of Mariam Tracia has recorded that she would walk miles to help people dying in their homes. In those days, the hospitals were primitive and far away in big towns only. It was often necessary to visit the homes of the dying at night and she would go with her younger brother. It was a common saying then that no one in Putanjara and in its surrounding had died without her prayer and assistance. Father Vidyati has recorded that once blessed mother spoke to him saying, Do you see, now that is useful to send her to the homes of Vishan. So don't discourage her. Her people having objection against her going like this. You must tell them not to object. The people of the locality had deep faith in her prayers. When they were in trouble with physical or mental ailments, they approached her seeking her prayers and advice. Her spiritual father wrote, A woman of poor family in the parish has been laid up more than 30 years with paralyzed hands and legs. There was a deep wound on her leg, but distant from the wound. Everyone deserted her because of the sting stench. When Tracy came to know about this, she went to her house, nursed her every day until her death. She sheltered the destitute and sick in her convent, took care of the poor and abundant at her side. Mariam Tracia went to the families of the sick and helped the needy with the food collected from other people. Tracia wanted the people to have an equal status and privilege in the society and help everyone equally. Her charitable deeds and dedicated effort had changed the rigid minds to convert to goodness. Mariam Tracia had no political or social clout to work. She made the sincere effort with great devotion to reach out to the suffering humanity. She started her work from her own hometown. The Lord used her as a yeast for the great measure of flows to live in it. With her short life of 50 years, she made a significant place in the church history, especially in Indian church pioneering the apostle for families. We shall listen to the accounts of her last days closely in upcoming episodes. Till then, prayers.